The aim of IM projects is to architect accessible, consistent and reliable information that is easy to consume and interpret. However, this is nearly entirely at odds with the security policy of most organisations. In this session, we'll consider why information security concerns are so hard to resolve and what steps from the very simple to the more complex can be taken to address them. It's typically only after the information management architecture has been built and only after some kind of security scare that the protection of information providers is given some thought. This is a shame because there are huge benefits to planning security from the outset. When faced with the architecture, customers tend to ask which bits should be secured. Should it be the enterprise data warehouse? Should it be the abstraction and federation layer? Should it just be the BI tools? The answer, of course, is all of it. This is extremely easy to say and extremely easy to put a wrapper on in the picture. But customers always ask whether there are some simple steps and indeed why it's so complex. So first of all, one very simple step. Export to spreadsheet is nearly always identified as a must have when requirements are drawn up for BI tools. This is of course a real nasty for security and for other reasons. It immediately disconnects the data from the reliable source it was provisioned from and can easily be copied and manipulated. Increasingly, BI tools are available with spreadsheet adding capability. This ties the spreadsheet to the data as opposed to the other way around. A very simple tip is to switch off the export in the deployment of the BI tool and simply to enable the spreadsheet add-in instead. This is just a small step though and if the architecture is going to be properly secure we must think about all layers of security. The innermost layer is where the EDW and the associated tools live. We can take several steps here to protect data. It's always worthwhile having role-based access. This can be at an entity level, i.e. this user can see this type of data or not, or at a row level, i.e. this user can see the rows for this department, but that's all. If possible, separation duties should be used here so that the administrators do not have to be able to see all of the data, even if they are responsible for the smooth running of the BI tool and the data warehouse. We can think about firewalling the technology by ensuring that requests to the data warehouse are from a correct source. But these sit in a cradle of infrastructure. Servers, storage, backup tapes and networks can all be accessed and information gleaned. So here we need to rely on encryption of the data both at rest and as it travels through the network. The trick here is to not make the encryption cumbersome, so it should be transparent to the tools and should minimize the performance impact, for example by getting the hardware rather than the software to do the decryption. Then we have the users themselves, who have a tendency to download information and store it locally. Users need to be helped to protect themselves, and this is where technologies like information rights management can really help. Beyond that, We'll want to share information with customers, suppliers, partners right around the world, for example over the internet. Here we need to rely on technologies like identity management and identity federation. So the idea is that a user is authenticated against a directory and then authorised to certain amounts of information provision. All that we now need is to provide a full audit trail for the auditor to prove that we are compliant and to investigate in case there is a data loss from the information management layer. So as we can see, there are many tools and techniques that need to be employed. The trick is to allow and plan for these from day one of a project. If this aspect is left, it can often be the first security breach which prompts action, and this is often all too late.